that's where Bill Hudson lived, was in there, the guy who ran the place. That's that was right, his and building. The manager lived in, there. lived in there, and he knew when you had company, he lived right there, and he could see anybody going in, no matter what time they came in, he knew it was going in there. So if you wanted to have somebody in, you told them to go to the back door. <laughs> Huh? Oh, the rock has always been there. Matter of fact, there used to be another rock over here that seems to have disappeared. Shane and Ginger ran in 1967. And I remember we moved in, my mom and my sister and I, and, and we had left what was a, a situation of family violence, and we just left out the back door and down the alley and stayed with relatives for a couple of months and then moved in here. And I remember we moved in. My mom had the opportunity. She could take any unit in the top six floors. And we took the one in the very top in the corner up there, 1202. So she could drink her coffee and smoke her cigarettes and get a good view. The penthouse. <laughs> the penthouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you guys were on the fifth floor, right? In the basement. The co-op was in the basement. The meeting room was there, and the other building was a senior building. The five twelve building, the building we just passed, was our senior building. What's the senior? Shane, you call it a co-op? Were you at an actual co-op? It was. Uh, the, you know, and, and we'll probably tell the, the story later, but it really the uh, the mothers. Um, put together some support and created a remarkable facility here, a co-op store, seniors programs, child care programs. The money was raised to build the Raycam Center initially, uh, um, the, the sugar shack when there was nothing and I remember building that which is an outrageous expenditure of money but a lot of fun. What's a sugar shack? We built a shed. There was no space here of any kind. So actually, we got some people in the young yeah. people. People here helped build it, yeah. and uh, with some builders, and they they built this up uh, this space that was just a big wooden shed with electricity and that, yeah. and it became the um, the community facility for young people, the youth facility, uh, until the uh, center was built. Yeah. Oh. And it was built. And it was called the Sugar Shack, and uh, and it was pretty much built. Uh, uh, by a few people who threw some support in and got a little bit of government. This was days when CMHC was funding things. Um, <laughs> the and policy was every home, every family should have a home. Yeah. Huh. What what year was the community center then built? It was open. It was open just after the NDP got kicked out. Ah. Just after Barrett got kicked out. Because remember, the day after the election, the Social Credit cut all funding that was going to it, and you guys opened it without any. Gip rock on the wall. It was the most beautiful opening. It was like packed with hundreds of people, and they ran this tape back and forth, you know, like you know, like danger <coughs> tape, and it was stamped over and over the opening of Ray Camp by the people, and they handed out a hundred little pairs of scissors, and every single person cut the ribbon. Oh. That and we moved because no the official. store was built in the basement of this building in a space. I remember Helena States was the manager, managed the store. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the one of the Raymer mothers, and uh, and then the store moved over and daycare and youth programs, and it was ran as a co-op, mm -hmm. uh, separate from the city. And then over time, it was taken over by Parksport at some point, and then it was expanded because it wasn't as big as it is yet. They added some gym stuff and that, so it wasn't a huge building, but it was a uh, it was a great facility, and it was. It literally was built by the people here. Uh, it, everything was done and by the mothers here, uh, largely uh, drove that, uh, and a couple of community development workers who helped uh, uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. So and when the Raycam was built, did that, did then, then the co-op itself decline or not? No, the co-op owned the building moved. and, oh, and controlled it. What so happened is when we got the idea to open a co-op, the first thing you think about is money. Where are we going to get the money? Right. And we were actually, we were very successful. We, with the help of Margaret Mitchell, we actually put an application into the Vancouver Foundation, and they actually gave us eight grand that we could pay back over a long time. Was it, I think it was the Vancouver Foundation. Yeah, it might have been. And we got an enormous amount of money, which, which at that time I thought was about $8,000, in which to do our renos and to buy the food. And that really helped kickstart our efforts. Because a lot, of, a lot came out of the Raymer Mother Track 
At, yeah, at, and then at that time the government had things like LIP and LEAP funding and that, mm -hmm. and and that money came here. And LEAP funding was pretty three-year funding, What's LEAP good funding? money. The local employment assistance program, yeah. I think it was called, funded by the federal government, and mm -hmm. and lots of people were hired. I know I worked there as a coordinator here. Uh, we had this strategy which was developed by the mothers and. Was that because I was a teenager at the time, about 18 or so, and I took that job, young, you know, welfare family, that it would just play on the heartstrings of the feds, and they would unload the money, and it worked. They unloaded the money, <laughs> along with all the hard work, and the people who actually produced all the programs. Before we move on, although there was no playground here at the time, my younger sisters remember this was so much fun, and she said, we didn't have playground equipment, but we had the rock. That's right. That rock. Yeah. She came back later and said it was a lot smaller than she remembered. <laughs> There was a lot of that, a rock there, and lots of stuff over here. And so there was no playground whatsoever. Uh, not well, even there were a bits and pieces. I think there was a jungle. Yeah, yeah there was a, a jungle, jungle gym here. Uh, but it was, but it was, there, it was pretty, pretty late. It was nothing like this stuff. That no fencing, no. nothing. Then there was a sound box in the back. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, that you, yeah, you wouldn't really want to spend much time. <laughs> in, uh, uh, but it was a good place to sit inside and have cigarettes. Yeah. No fence along the railroad at all. Nothing. It was just everything was wide open. Just a grave. Yeah. <laughs>